Casas' mission would not be realized without the support of the family court judges. And to represent them is Judge McDonald, family court judge for Division 13. Her history includes working as a social worker, as well as assistant counsel for the Cabinet for Health and Family Services. In 2010, she was elected to the bench of district court, and in 2014, joined the family court bench. So please join me in welcoming Judge McDonald. Good morning. Well, half of you are awake. More coffee, please. Will, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here this morning. A young couple went to the beach for a vacation. They took their young son with them. During that week, a large storm came through. The next morning, when the couple got up, the son wasn't in the home. They looked outside. The child was on the beach. On the beach with him were hundreds and hundreds of starfish that the storm had washed up. And the son was out there picking one up at a time and throwing it back into the water. The father thought, how odd. He went outside, put his arm around his son, and said, son, come on back in the house. This is way too hard. You're never going to be able to help all these. It's not worth it. The child picked up another starfish and looked up at his dad and said, it's worth it to this one, daddy. And that's what CASA is for the court. Every child is special. Every child is worth something. None should be left behind. And I concur with Will, we need more volunteers. We don't have enough for all of the children we deal with. As somebody said earlier, I believe, I am a sitting family court judge. And in the process of that, on Thursdays, my day, is my dependency, abuse, and neglect docket. That's where I have contact with CASA. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't add that my husband, retired Judge Tom McDonald, is, the found, is one of the founding fathers of CASA here in Jefferson County. If I don't say that, I have to pay a price when I get home, so I apologize. <laughs> Lisa Pelega, where are you? Over here. Stand up. Lisa is the supervisor for many of the volunteers, and she is assigned, bless her heart, to my court. So she sits with me every Thursday. Now, when training finishes, they bring the volunteers in, and the volunteers have to be sworn in, and they sign an oath. She brings the volunteer up. I swear them in. We sign the oath. And always, Lisa says the same thing. Judge, pearls of wisdom? And I always say the same thing. Someone earlier today said, CASA volunteers are the voice of the children, but they are the eyes for the court. There are so many adults that run through these children's lives. Parents are in and out, unfortunately. Social workers change, it seems like, every week right now. They don't have anything consistent. They're moved from home to home, relative to relative. The only consistent person in their lives many times is their CASA volunteer. Eventually, the children begin to trust that this person is not going to leave them like everybody else does. And they begin to trust. And they tell the volunteer things that they won't tell a social worker, that they won't tell a relative, because they're afraid to. And the CASA volunteers are very adept at giving that information to the court without violating that trust. And oftentimes, it's that information that provides something to the court that can give us the chance to really help this child. One example that I can give you today, and if you all heard me speak a few years ago, I apologize, because it's the same example, but it's the best one I can remember. We had the Cabinet for Health and Family Services cannot go outside the state of Kentucky. It makes sense. It's a state agency. But as all of you know who live in Louisville, Indiana is much closer to downtown than Valley Station. So we have families that come back and forth across the river. And I had a family. The parents were here. The child was here. The cabinet took the child in foster care. We had relatives in Indiana but it was going to take six to eight months to get an interstate home study done to go through the proper channels. This child needed to get out of foster care and be with loving relatives that this child knew. My hands were tied. I have the authority to give custody of a child to someone, but I'm not going to do that if I don't know what that house looks like, if I don't have background checks. The cabinet was good enough to help me with a few things, but because I had a CASA volunteer, that person went across the river, 
looked at that home, met with the family members, talked to collaterals, came back, gave me that information. And because I trusted that person to do only what was right for that child, I took custody away from the cabinet and gave it to relatives. And that child remains there now. No way else could we do that. No way else. CASA is a blessing for family courts. I could not do my job on Thursdays without them. I am so thankful every Thursday when Lisa comes in. And if Lisa's not there, Susie, you're around somewhere too as another supervisor. Susie comes in. I share her with Judge Webb and probably somebody else on Thursdays as well. They run all over the place. I challenge you all, if you cannot follow Will's directive, please give me a Thursday. Come to my court, sit in my court, watch what happens. Yes, these are confidential courts and I'll give you a little spiel about what you can and cannot do with the information you receive while there. But come see how these things are put into action. Watch how CASA benefits the children in your community and give back. Thank you.